Hello, and welcome to Aquarian Energy. It's mid-January, and we have already experienced quite a lot of Aquarian Energy, but uh, there's lots more to come. So uh, in this video, I'm going to be referring to some topics that some areas of our world find a little sensitive. So in that instance, I suggest you read the information on my website or you ask to be connected to my newsletter. Otherwise, I don't think they'll allow me to have the YouTube up. So let's go. Let's talk about the um, energy of Aquarius. As you can see from my background, I've been spending my time away somewhere else. This is my happy place at Porpunka, close to the spiritual energy of Mount Buffalo. And there's been time to contemplate the astrological movements, enjoy the environment and refresh, refresh the mind, body and soul. Just before the ingress of Pluto into Aquarius in mid-January, there was an important meeting in Switzerland, uh, inverted commas, where those who understand humanity the least gather to share the complete incomprehension of the species of which they are notionally part. End quotations. So let us consider some of that agenda, as well as the planetary movements, including the ingress, that means when Pluto entered Aquarius, and the new moon in Aquarius on Sunday, the 10th of February. And this also heralds the beginning of the Chinese New Year of the Wood Dragon. So here we go. Pluto moved into Aquarius again with the sun. Now, Pluto has been in Aquarius, in and, out, in and out of Aquarius the last year, but really has come into Aquarius on the 21st of January. And a few days later, Uranus, which rules Aquarius and which has been tracking retrograde in Taurus for several months, stationed direct. So at the moment, all planets have forward motion, which suggests that events are happening quickly and life seems to be moving very fast. Is that what you're finding? The message? Carpe diem. Take advantage of any opportunities offered to you. Go with the flow as far as it is possible and sensible. You don't know what beautiful opportunities might be around the corner. Best strategy? Map out, for, map out for yourself what you would like to achieve this year in all aspects of your life. Understand that you are a multifaceted human being. You are a spiritual being having a human existence. You have a physical aspect to your life. How much exercise is needed and sensible and can fit into your program? Are your emotional needs being met? Do you need time out? with or from your loved one or two or pay family or counselling to address emotional aspects that are unbalanced? Unbalanced? Well, you know, some of us are. Are you part of a family? How important is that to you? Do you have any objectives there? Improve the relationship with your parent, your spouse, your child? What about your house, uh, your business work and business and work life? Do you want to make changes there? What changes would you like to make? And how would you like to go about them? So may I suggest you make a plan for you this year, just like you would make a plan for a business or another project. Allow time in February to dream and create so that when the equinox arrives on March the 21st and Ari's energy moves in, you can use that energy to kickstart your plans and really make some progress this year. When you have plans for yourself, you can then easily and quickly assess any opportunities that arise. Do they serve your objectives? Should you adjust your objectives to use that new energy to propel you to where you want to be? How can you share those opportunities with others so that you can all or both benefit? 
Uranus, as I mentioned before, is in Taurus, shifting the way we manage resources, including finance, money, food. Keep your eyes peeled for different and better ways to manage those resources, both for yourself and for your community. Be aware that much of that information may not be published in the news or on TV. Hunt out alternative sources of information. The high wire is one such source. Also check YouTube. Now I'll put some references uh, in the notes for this. There are good messages on YouTube, but you do need to use discernment. RB is controversial and sometimes harsh, but he does ask questions that make us think. Now the new moon in Aquarius occurs on it must be Saturday, the 10th of February, just before nine o'clock local time. So adjust for your location. Uranus and Venus are harmoniously connected in Earth signs, which may provide sudden surprises around love interests, finances or other matters of value for you. On the other hand, Uranus in Taurus forms a square aspect to the new moon. So we are likely to experience unexpected events. Shocks relating to finances, maybe even the truth. What is the truth? Revolution? Rebellion? Aviation changes? Possibly even cyber attacks? Oh, the new moon in February, Aquarius, is also the beginning of the Chinese New Year, the year of the wood dragon. And the dragon symbolizes power, nobleness, honor, luck, and success in traditional Chinese culture. It's a supernatural being, the dragon, with no parallel for talent and excellence. Whatever you believe, it seems we are entering a time when there is much activity on many levels, and there will be shocks and surprises. Our challenge is to accommodate the changes into our lives in ways that benefit ourselves and our wider communities. Trying to maintain outdated habits and practices will no longer serve us well. If you've got any ideas, please share. Now, let me talk about Pluto. So looking around me, I see many examples of Pluto energy at work. The results of Pluto in Capricorn are emerging with disclosures by the US CDC and the reported results of the Haynes inquiry here in Australia into the banking sector. So just some examples. Early Pluto in Aquarius manifests in the HR programs being trialled by Medicare, where people are being far more empowered than ever. And the results of, are so far are very encouraging. Also reports about some of the projects to benefit from the early adoption of AI technology with Elon Musk. So let's look at Pluto in Capricorn in relation to the C.D.C out of the US. This organization set up a voluntary reporting system when jabs started to be administered. Via what they call the VPhone app, questions were sent to volunteers asking about responses to this. Over 10 million folks volunteered to participate. Not only did over 800,000 800, of this cohort needed medical attention following this. They needed several visits for medical assistance. Most reports came within a week of this. Over 2.1 million, that is more than 20%, reported adverse effects. Released by this organization were the tick the box responses. Respondents were also able to respond with free text, which to date has not been released. Now, from the beginning, there were reports of things like anaphylaxis and allergic reactions. And they were concerning issues, but they weren't in the checkbox fields. And before the release of these, 
this organization was already aware of some of the possible adverse side effects. And uh, have a look below, have a look in the notes. Or if they're not in the notes, have a look on my website, www.karma.com.au slash blog for more information. Some of this I can't put on YouTube. So the Freedom of Information Act in the USA enables public access to the starter. However, Dell and his team fought in the courts for over a year to access this information, supposed to be transparent to all. Reference in the notes. A judge has recently ordered that this organisation release all of the 7.2 million free text entries available to the public. How long do you think it'll take them to comply? When it took them a year to release the results of the check the checkbox um, responses. Do you think they're trying to hide any information? You know, Pluto promised to dig out the dirt. Now, here it is from this very prominent organisation, and it is not pretty. What else? Now, another example of Pluto in Capricorn. The Hain Royal Commission in Australia. This was a Royal Commission into Banking, which began several years ago. And during the long drawn out hearings, a number of major Australian financial institutions were shown to be irresponsible. And in some case, absolutely deceptive in their management of clients and client funds. For example, AMP had charged its clients millions of dollars in fees without providing a service in return. In the case of the major banks, the fees for no service issue, inverted commas, ballooned into 4.4 billion remediation job, inverted commas. The banks had to reimburse their clients. Maybe you were one of them. Another scandal uncovered during the inquiry was the, inverted commas, adverse treatment of farmers and business borrowers and the aggressive techniques used to grow loan portfolios, inverted commas. This sort of behaviour forced a lot of people out of business. A number of senior officers in the banks were sued or forced to resign. And the fallout from this inquiry will be felt for some time to come. Pluto has done a reasonable job here. And I'm sure that if you consider what else has been going on in our society over the last 20 years, you could find some other examples of Pluto digging out dirt and exposing business practices or other practices which did not serve the intended clients. Maybe you've got an example you could share with us. Well, now let's look at Pluto into Aquarius. Something in my eye here, I don't know what it is. And changes to the way we work. So this is a more positive note, and I was pleased to read in the uh, Australian Financial Review at the weekend, the 3rd, 3rd, 4th of February, about the HR practices, practice changes being trialled at Medibank for a four-day working week. Apparently inspired by humanocracy, creating organisations as amazing as the people inside them, written in 221, 2021. The teams in the trial feel a great sense of responsibility. Unplanned absences are reported to have reduced significantly. At Medibank, 250 staff divided into teams of around 12 people use a 180-100 principle. 100% pay for 80% of time worked once 100% of the team's targets are met. Inverted commas, the day off is considered a gift for getting the work done and cutting out unproductive work. Inverted commas. The website for a four-day work week claims that the program delivers a 36% jump in revenue 42% decrease in resignations and 68%
reduction in burnout, plus 63% found it easier to attract talent. Pluto energy here is clearly in Aquarius, putting the power into the hands of the people. Aquarian energy likes groups and communities to work together to achieve outcomes. Aquarian energy likes to share within the group and take responsibility within the group. I have mentioned before the work of Catherine McBean in the in the England, putting groups together to support community health using uh, via the People's Health Alliance, and this is very much a Pluto in Aquarius energy instigated by the Pluto in Capricorn energy, which showed how broken the medical systems are. Another example of Pluto in Aquarius are the farmers on strike in Europe. Fancy farmers going on strike. You would have read, maybe you wouldn't have uh, read uh, in the mainstream, but um, more likely in other sources, Farmers from several European countries are protesting at attempted legislation to direct their activity, thus endangering the food supply. You're more likely to find information on this via YouTube, as the mainstream publishes this with a slightly different slant. So this is people saying, no, we are not going to obey top-down power. Aquarius is about people power. Aquarius is also about the productive use of artificial intelligence. And AI can also be used, like many other powers, for uh, for not good purposes. In the AFR this week, Elon Musk is reported um, talking about chip implants into folk who are disabled with spinal injuries or even blindness. So like any AI, like any technology, this can be applied for benefit or otherwise. But using AI in this way is smart to help people uh, get back functions they haven't, their body's been injured for. But it's when this AI technology is applied to control unthinking folk creating zombies that it becomes a negative application of intelligence so as i've mentioned a lot of this information i've gleaned from this week's uh, australian financial review the third and the fourth of february sometimes it has lots of information other times it doesn't this week it was just for me it was a gold mine now I want to talk about something that is also that was uh, is also a little bit sensitive. So the WEF and check the notes, please. And while many of us, including me, were relaxing in January, there were a significant few meeting in Switzerland to determine what the world should be doing and where humanity should be going. I found a video by somebody Oliver to be most interesting. Unfortunately I can't share it as it on as it is on Patreon and you need to sign up to be to listen, but then that might be a good thing. I love the way he describes these participants as cacistocrats. And D dash A dash V dash O dot S as inverted commas Fantasy Island, where those who understand humanity the least gather to share the complete incomprehension of the species of which they are notionally a part, inverted commas. And I love the way he speaks with his lovely Scottish brogue. He is, inverted commas, profoundly alarmed by the way the cacistocrats have manoeuvred to seize control of the very stuff of life. Money, energy, and food. Check out CBDCs, the war in Ukraine, the war on farming and food supply in pursuit of zero emissions. 
all of it is about top-down control of populations, Pluto, ruthless determination of a tiny minority determined to tell the many how to live, close inverted commas. Neil's view contrasts with the information published on the WEF website. Interestingly, that website highlights travel as the latest news item. Is this a lead away from an agenda which is less palatable for the people? The focus of the 54th meeting of the WEF as stated on their website as is stated on their website as inverted commas, the fundamental principles driving trust, including transparency, consistency, and accountability, close inverted commas. At face value, the agenda appears not unfriendly towards humankind. However, our human experience over the last five years suggests that the agenda to date has been anything but kind to us humans. There is focus on the optimum use of AI, climate change, and jobs creation, amongst other items. With reference to AI, see my previous comments about Elon Musk. Now, the changing weather patterns is a topic of interest to many, and I've mentioned this before. So what do you believe is ha really happening? Do you honestly believe that humankind is creating change? If so, I suggest you read some of Ian Plymer's publications, Professor Ian Plymer, which encompass many areas of research to support his contentions that what we are experiencing is a normal cycle in the global process. In fact, he claims we are in a cooling phase, not a warming phase. The extension of this lining, line of thinking, if you believe that we humans are creating this change in the weather, is to move away from carbon-based fuels, which currently provide us with power, to renewables. Now, where can we find evidence that renewables can provide the amount of power that we currently consume or need? You tell me. Now, without going down that rabbit hole about how environmentally friendly those renewables really are, we need to look forward and find better ways to generate power. With Uranus in Taurus, what other methods of power generation can we access? If you consider Foster Gamble's extensive research over many years, there are other sources of power available to us, but they've not been released to the general public because they don't create dollars for anyone. Funny about that. Now, with Pluto back in Aquarius, the power is devolving again to the people. Money is becoming less of a focus because as people, we are taking away that power from those who would control us. For me, the direction in which the WEF have directed the global population over the last few years has represented plutonic control at its worst. Control of the many by a few. Feudalism. Just like in the old days of monarchs, the people have had no role in electing these self-appointed leaders to their positions of power and influence. I would like to think that with the ingress of Pluto into Aquarius, that the people are waking up and will not accept this top-down control. Remember that the last time Pluto went into Aquarius, there were revolutions in America and notably in France, where the people decapitated their monarchs. They haven't had any monarchs since. Love to have your thoughts. I have spent the last month in my happy place at Porpunka, close to the spiritual energy of Mount Buffalo. The weather has been particularly kind. The Buckland River has been a source of much enjoyment. Water flowing at a reasonable height facilita facilitated floating from the waterhole back to camp on several occasions. 
Sometimes lilos with holes mean that the traveller falls off. My grandson thought it was very funny that Emma kept falling off and he sailed merrily along ahead of me enjoying the experience. This year, I conducted a few yoga classes on the banks of the river. It's such a beautiful environment to enjoy a yoga class. And the local, the local ducks encourage us with their gentle chatter. Students made donations to the local CFA, Country Fire Authority. Thanks everyone who co contributed. It has been time for me to practice my breathing exercises that I plan to teach later in the year. And just to spend time in nature, replenishing my energy. So finally, enjoy the Aquarius new moon and the year of the dragon energy. Let's be optimistic and seek out and embrace opportunities to make progress towards a better and more equitable future for everybody. See you next time. Bye for now.